Welcome all to the live stream of the general introduction of the Master's Welcome Day. My name is Rosa van Hees. I'm a student advisor here at the Faculty of Science. My name is Björk Johannes and I'm a student, a master's student of physics and astronomy. And during this uh, presentation, during this whole uh, meeting, you can ask your questions through menti.com. And there's also uh, a code to enter this menti and it's 3327683. So, if you have any questions, you can ask them there. Let's have a look at the program for today. Um, this live stream will cover what we will call the general introduction to our faculty. We will start with uh, a talk from our vice dean, Professor Niklo de Groot. This will be about our campus. Then we will have um, an interactive poll with you. Then Rosa will talk about student support and the role of the student advisors. Then we will learn a little bit more about the IT facilities on this campus through a video clip. Then one of the board members of the study association will tell you more about all the different study associations and we'll end the live stream with a Q&A session with all the questions from Mentimeter. So please ask your questions there again. And then after this live stream, it will end at 10.50, but then after you will have an online workshop about your intercultural awareness. Then at 2 p.m. you will actually have a face-to-face -face meeting with your uh, fellow students on campus with your student advisor and this is followed by a social activity from the study association. And we'll end the day together behind the Huygens building with a small dinner and a toast. Yeah. So as Björk mentioned, uh, we will start with our vice dean, Nicolo de Groot. He will tell more about the faculty and the Radboud University. So please welcome Professor Nicolo. Thank you. And uh, also for my part, a warm welcome to this uh, Master Welcome Day. It's my pleasure to tell you a little bit more about the city of Nijmegen, our university and the faculty. Uh, to start with, where are we? Well, we are here. The city of Nijmegen is uh, in the Netherlands, on, uh, almost on the border with Germany. Uh, and the city of Nijmegen is situated on the River de Waal, which is the main branch of the Rhine. Here you uh, have a pretty picture of uh, the river and our city. Uh, and the city has a long history. It's the oldest city in the Netherlands. It uh, dates back to Roman times. And it's a middle-sized city, about 180,000 inhabitants, of which a very large part, 40,000, are students at our university and also at the University of Applied Sciences. And here you see some uh, scenery pictures of uh, the center of Nijmegen and bridge crossing the river. The Radboud University uh, is a typical Dutch university. We have about 10 general universities. Uh, the city of Nijmegen goes back to the Roman Empire, as I said. I skip a little bit. Um, in 1923, uh, almost 100 years ago, next year we'll have our 100 year anniversary of the university. The university was greatly expanded on one of the estates, uh, which uh, means that we still have a very pretty campus, uh, which has been dramatically modernized uh, lately. It's a very nice green area close to the city. Some facts and figures of the university. We have 24,000 students. Uh, of which uh, about 3,700 are in the Faculty of Science. 10% of our student population are international students, but almost double of that in, in our faculty. Uh, you see the number of staff members. We have a large international staff, seven bachelor programs and seven master programs with a lot of uh, specialization. Uh, here's an overview of the seven faculties were here in the uh, Faculty of Science, um, and uh, we're what a general university. Sorry about that. Uh, 
So we're one, uh, one of the, the seven faculties at this uh, university and uh, the overall university covers all research areas from humanities to, uh, to medicine and with a lot of interdisciplinary research topics as well. An overview picture of our uh, campus from our uh, tallest building and you can see here in the circle, the Huygens building, that's the, uh, you know, the main seat of, uh, of the science faculty. And please notice how green our city is. So the Huygens building, um, one of the research highlights of our faculty was the award of the Nobel Prize for uh, graphene, the miracle material, to uh, uh, a former staff member uh, Andrei Gein and uh, former PhD student Konstantin Novoselov, who both still held visiting professor uh, positions at our university. Uh, but this is not the only type of research we're doing. Here are some of the research highlight of, say, the, the past decade. Uh, I start on uh, uh, the top left. There's uh, the picture of the black hole, in which we played a very prominent role. Uh, top middle, the studies of the insect population in Europe where we've seen a dramatic decline over the past few years. The discovery of gravitational waves of the, on the top right, for which also a Nobel Prize being rewarded, in which we were one of the partner universities. And then bottom left, the public transport card, or OV card, as it's, it's called here, uh, f of which we discovered some major privacy and security issues. Bottom center, we have extremely fast switching of, of electron systems, which could lead to breakthrough new memory technology. And on the bottom right, my personal favorite as a particle physicist, the discovery of the Higgs boson exactly 10 years ago, in which we were one of the important groups. Here are some of our famous uh, scientists, uh, not uh, unsurprisingly connected to some of the research you've seen before. Mike Jette, who's uh, done uh, breakthrough work on microorganisms, bacteria, cleaning up uh, ammonia, uh, amongst other things. Uh, Bart Jacobs, cybersecurity pioneer. Uh, Wilhelm Huck, who's been on uh, nanotechnology and chemistry. And then uh, Heino Falke and Monika uh, Moshi Brodska, who've been uh, two of the leading scientists on the black hole picture. Now, switching to our building, um, we have a beautiful, transparent, open, very light building, which has uh, plenty of facilities to study in small groups. Uh, we have an easy access to the members of staff, uh, lots of open doors where you can have quick uh, contact. Uh, some other excellent student facilities of which we'll you will hear more uh, today uh, and a very vibrant cultural and sport life around the faculty and the university. We have 24 master programs. I'm not going to read all of them uh, to you, but here you see an overview in the medical or bio and biology cluster, molecular sciences, computer and information sciences, and physics and mathematics uh, with uh, some interdisciplinary uh, modules in between. Um, you know, like science and education, science management and innovation and science and society. The study facilities, I've uh, mentioned those, but uh, here are some, uh, some pictures. Uh, we notice that a lot of our students, uh, uh, when they don't have lectures, they still come to the building because of the facilities, and uh, they really like it here, and we're proud of those. The research is um, done in institutes, and uh, we have seven of those, the Institute for Molecules and Materials, the Institute for Mathematics, Astrophysics, and Particle Physics, where the, uh, um, the 
Rabat Institute for Biological and, Instru and Environmental Science, the Biology Institute, Info Institute for Computing and Information Science, Institute for Science and Society, the Rabat Institute for Molecular Life Sciences, and the Donbass Institute for Neuroscience. Now, one important point, the diversity and inclusion. Basically, we want everyone to feel welcome at this university and to feel safe at this university, regardless of your ethnicity, your gender, your sexuality, and we have an active policy to stop discrimination. Never hesitate to contact your student uh, uh, con confidential advisor in case you should encounter uh, discrimination. Um, we have your back in these cases. So, what's in it for you? I hope a wonderful time. Um, and to hear more about this, I'll uh, give back to Rosa and George. Please. So, thank you very much, uh, Professor Nicolo de Groot, for your introduction to the city and as well as the university. Now that you have seen a bit more about us, we would of course like to know more about you. Yes. So if you all could go to the Mentimeter, uh, the code is on the screen, but it's also uh, in the chat on YouTube. So please don't put all your questions in the YouTube chat, but do put them in the Mentimeter chat, because that's where we will be. And I'll give you some time to log in. Um, and we have some questions for you. So then we get to know more about you. You can answer the questions and we can also see the results of uh, what you put in. So I'll give you some time. And if you have been logging in, then we will start with the first question, which is, uh, which master's program will you study? So please click on the master program that you will be participating in. And as you can see, we can see the, the answers coming in already. Yeah, and, and Professor Nicolo de Groot also mentioned that we have actually 24 different programs. It's a little bit too much to show here on the screen. That's why we decided to only choose between the master programs uh, instead of the specializations. Of course, later today you will also see all the students and per specialization so you know better how many students are there in your particular program. Yeah, and we can already see that um, for now most of the students will start medical biology. Yeah, often and medical biology and computing science are the biggest. I'm not sure if computing science is also high up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's quite high. And mathematics and information sciences are most often the smallest. And it's also a little bit what you see here in the results. Yeah, I'm also glad to see uh, a few physics and astronomy students here. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think, um, although the answers are still rolling in, it's already quite clear to see which uh, programs are uh, most studied and these are the people you will uh, encounter on your studies as well of course so let's go to the next question which is why did you choose Radboud University and you can type in the answer and send it to us it will pop up on the screen the and bigger the word the more answers are given with yeah. the same word of course it's the yeah. so-called word cloud so Björk, maybe you can tell a bit about your decision to choose for Radboud University. Yeah, sure. Um, I really like the city, Nijmegen. Uh, I've, been, I've been here before and I just really like the atmosphere of the city and the vibe of the city. Uh, and besides, I walked around at the university. I love the Huygens building. And I think that, especially for me, it was quite important that the program that was offered was really mm. nice here. And I can see now the answers rolling in. Uh, some people say it's close by. I am sure that is not for all of you, but it's nice to see some of you are already cl close by. 
I see the master program, it's a nice study program, the specialization. Courses. But, yeah. Green city. That's really true. You saw the picture also already on Nicolo's slides. Yeah, and within 15 minute, minutes cycling, you are outside of the city, northwest, southeast. It's a different nature, so it's really nice to yeah. explore in your weekends, definitely. Yeah. I also see the facilities coming up. And now it gets a little <laughs> bit tiny. <laughs> but I yeah. think... I see that many people of you have many different reasons to come here, which is really nice to see. And I see a lot of the same words coming up in quite a slightly different uh, configuration. So I think it's a, we have quite a clear picture of why you want to come here. Can we also go to the next question? Yes. The next question for us is uh, where are you from so yeah. what is your nationality and again it was too uh, difficult to put all the countries in the world here so we decided to put the continents and the Netherlands as a separate to see who is international and who is actually from the Netherlands well maybe nice fact to know is that like last year, we have again about 19 to 20% of international students in the master's programs here at the Faculty of Science. Uh, you will maybe not see that in the numbers here because not everyone might be here in the general introduction session. Uh, also a nice fact, actually, I was looking through the data and I noticed that we have 29 different nationalities this year and even 39 different birth countries. Wow. So there are some students that were born in a country, most likely, where they have it as a second nationality or just another first nationality. But at least very multicultural, so that's yeah. nice to see. Yeah. What are you do we have one from Antarctica this <laughs> year? Always, always yeah. one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I see we don't have anyone from uh, Australia, Oceania. Okay, yeah. But Could be true. Yeah. I've not noticed that. But a lot of people from Europe, which is, of course, to be expected. Yeah, but it's nice to see that there's people from uh, most of the other continents as well. Yeah, nice to see from overseas, indeed. Yeah. And of course, a big majority from the Netherlands. Yeah, that was to be expected, of course. Yeah. Okay, we will go to the next question now, um, which is a really easy one, I think. How old are you? So please type in uh, the number. Look, there's, they're coming in. Yeah, it's a, indeed about the range that we expected a little bit, especially yeah. in the Netherlands. Yeah. What, what age did you start your uh, I started master's? my master's at 20 and I'm 23 now. <laughs> Taking your time, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, I myself also started uh, around 21, 22 in my time, years back. And that's because in the, in the Netherlands the bachelor only takes three years. So that's why most students when they start at 18, they go into their master's around 21 or one or two years later. And of course, there's also the possibility of taking a gap year, so that will yeah. increase the range a little bit. Maybe nice to know as well that the city of Nijmegen has about 180,000 of inhabitants, of which 40,000 are studying in Nijmegen. Not all of them live in Nijmegen, slightly more than half of those 40,000, but it gives a very young vibe to the city, and that's also what you said, right? Yeah. Like the vibe of the city yeah. is very young, and lots they of always, activities. They always say it's an old city with a young vibe. Exactly, that's the slogan of the city. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next question now. The next question is, which sport would you like to do in Nijmegen? So Nicola already said it a little bit, but we have lots of sports to offer here. We have a really good uh, sports center on campus. Um, so I'm really curious to know which sports you want, would like to play here in Nijmegen. Yeah, I see ice skating and that is certainly something yeah. we have here. Yeah, maybe uh, if rain. you're lucky even on uh, real ice in the winter. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I see hiking, I see football, mountain biking. We've got, although we don't have actual mountains, we got some great mountain biking tracks uh, in the neighborhood. Yeah, around Goesbeek, I suppose, yeah. in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also the sports center offers over 80 sports, different sports, where you can 
uh, buy a ticket hour to just enjoy the sports for one hour, but also sometimes to choose a course for a whole quarter. And then you can get lessons in that particular sport. Yeah, true. And we've got so many sports activities. I see, <laughs> for example, free running, table tennis, pole dancing, and all of those sports are covered in their uh, sports center. Yeah, so check it out. If your sport that you want to practice here is available at the sports center, Yeah, I would say. Yeah, it's nice to see so many different sports. And still coming in. Yeah. Uh, let's go um, to the final questions. Uh, and the final question is, do you, what are your hobbies? So we've already had the sports, but what other hobbies do you have? Yeah. Because apart from all the sports societies and sports associations, mm -hmm. we have a lot of other so associations uh, who... More culturally. More culturally involved, yeah. Be working as a hobby, okay. Could be, yeah. why not? Not my favorite, but... <laughs> if, well, if working is your hobby, yeah, then exactly. at least you get paid for your hobby, no? Yeah. <laughs> so that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we, indeed we have also stu student associations for different cultural activities. Think about uh, the Q Harmony, where you can be part of an orchestra if you play a music instrument. Or we have also an orchestra. We have a debating association. Yeah. Uh, some uh, photography, actually. Yeah, you're participating I'm, uh, in it yourself. Yeah, I'm part of the photography association. But we've got next to Q Harmony. Actually, we also have student big band. We have a choir. Uh, we've got a sort of theater group, if I'm correct. Um, That's true. Yeah. 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 So, so it's a perfect uh, way to find peers with similar yeah. interest, but maybe not with a, with your specific study program. Yeah. I also saw some baking and cooking. There's also associations for this, uh, where you can meet up, uh, have potluck dinners. So I think uh, for everyone, there will be something here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. search around if there is any student association for your particular hobby. If you cannot find it or you need some help, of course you can come to the student advisor or ask your peers to see if they can help you out. Yeah. I really would advise uh, joining uh, one of the associations. It's great fun. I think that was uh, those were our questions from uh, thementi.com. So now we've asked you a couple of questions. But again, if you have any questions during the presentations, please send them in through menti.com with this code. And then at the end of the um, meeting, we will have a Q&A session. And we will answer, hopefully, most of your questions. We'll try at least. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you for participating in the meeting. Yeah, thank you indeed. The uh, next item on the agenda is actually a presentation by me about the different student support that we offer inside the Huygens building. Uh, besides that, I would like to talk a little bit about the Radboud Honors Academy that we have here inside the university. Uh, but let's start with the student support. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm one of the student advisors here at the faculty. And as student advisor, the word says it already, we advise students through their academic year. Now, that means that we have to be easy to approach, and we are, are as well. We are located in the Huygens building, wing eight, ground floor, in the so-called education center, where also the two other student support services that we offer are housed. I will talk about those two later. And uh, now, wha wha what can you do? What, well, what can we help you with during your academic career? Uh, think about when you have to find information online and you're not able to find it because the Radbo website is just really big. Uh, so sometimes it can be helpful to use uh, some, ask for some help from your student advisor. We are also there to help structuring your program, especially during your master's. You have a lot of electives to choose from and decisions to make on internship and it can be very helpful to discuss your program with someone that knows the program, like a student advisor. Uh, then. So when you have to look for an internship or if you face problems during your internship, you can come to us as well and we can see, advise you how to deal with it. Uh, translate rules and regulations through today, well, the daily practices. Um, can be very difficult to read all the, these documents with the regulations and rules. Uh, so that's why we are there to translate them for you. 
And sometimes students also come to us with new initiatives. So they have a good idea to improve the program or the faculty or student sport whatsoever, but they don't have the network. So in that case, you can come to us and we see how we can help you start these. But finally, and most importantly, actually, I think we are there to listen to you and dry your things if things are bad. We're all humans. Things can happen during your stu study life, uh, personal circumstances, things that happen inside the university. You can come to us if you don't know who to talk to. Come to us and we'll see how we can help you from there. Um, that to say, I can imagine that you wonder who is going to be my student advisor for the next two years. That's why I have here a wall of pictures to introduce them shortly to you. Of course, later today, you will meet your student advisor in person on campus, but it's nice to have seen a face before that. So I would like to start with mathematics, Ina de Vries. For molecular sciences, we have Marjolein Ruters. For uh, Peri, Peri Groot is there for computing science and information sciences. And this year he is helped by Dorianne van Schaik for information sciences as well. Uh, Connie Moore is there for biology. For medical biology, we have Monika Terhal. And of course, there's me for physics and astronomy. So as I said, you will meet us later today in person on campus. And what I like to say about this team, uh, lastly, is, is a very great team. I think not only because we have plenty of years of student advising experience, but also we studied, all of us studied uh, the program or a very similar program to the program you're going to study in the next two years. So we can actually, uh, we actually understand what you're studying and help you with that. It can create very nice conversations. Then the other student support that I would like to talk about is uh, Rappert International. As I said, Rappert International is also housed in the ed uh, Education Center, ground floor, wing eight. And they are there for students who want to go abroad during their program. So maybe you have a thought already if you want to do some courses abroad or maybe your whole internship. Uh, if you have that idea or you're doubting about it, go to the Go Abroad Week in the first week of October. You will receive an invite via email somewhere in September, so keep an eye on your email. And what can they help you with? For example, they can s see if there are scholarships available for s uh, short stays or long stays. Um, if you want, of course, more information about what this could be and how to apply for things, then you can visit their webpage. Then thirdly, we have Career Service Science. And as the name says, it's mainly there to support you for your next step after your master's program. You can go there, have an individual appointment and discuss your questions that you have about maybe how to apply for jobs, how to find jobs, vacancies. You can also join one of their workshops or uh, an alumni lecture that they organize. In their workshops, you can, for example, learn how to write a CV. And during the alumni lectures, you can listen to actually old ex-students that we have and now work somewhere, how they experience their working uh, day and how they use their learned skills from their master's program in their daily work. So that can be nice to see some perspective. Furthermore, we have a course career orientation. Uh, you don't get credits for, for it, but it's more for your own personal development. Uh, you can explore what you might like to do after your master's program and what is also possible. And last but not least, I want to highlight Career Central, the new platform that Career Service Center of Service Science has set up in the last years, where both students and both com and companies can create a profile with skills they have or are looking for. And with a bias-free matching, you students and companies are matched. So you can see which companies are actually looking for a skills, for skilled person like me. Also here, for more information or making appointment, etc., you can go to their webpage or email them with your questions. And lastly, if you don't know where to go and you have questions, come to your student advisor and then we will refer you to the right address. Um, then next, as I said, I would also like to tell something about Radboud Honors Academy. Some of you might like an extra challenge on top of your master's program. That's why Radboud University set up the Honors Academy. In the master's, they offer two different programs that you can do alongside of your studies. 
One is the project impact and the other one is beyond the frontiers. Those two programs, they slightly differ from each other in a way that the project impact is where you will work in teams, interdisciplinary teams, on a project uh, with on a social issue project like climate ch change or mental health, very popular topic these days. It takes about a year uh, and it's about one day of work per week. So that's extra that you will have to do. Whereas Beyond the Frontiers is more of an individual project where maybe you have a great idea of doing research and this is the ideal opportunity to actually conduct your own setup research in a Dutch institute or maybe abroad. This is a shorter, 10 weeks at least, you can extend it and it's full time. For this program you can get a scholarship and uh, yeah, as you can see the application deadlines differ per program. So if you want to have more information, go to the Rabat Honors Academy webpage to find those. Last, what they also offer is the Honors Lab. Uh, the name says it already. It's a lab where you will experiment for a shorter time and less hours on yeah, interdisciplinary projects. Uh, so also it, it, it's like a little bit like Project Impact, but then for shorter time and in a very experimental way. Also, this is uh, available, information about the Honors Labs are available on the website. So please go there and contact your student advisor if you want to see if Honors Academy is something for you. Then, before we go to the next topic on the agenda, I would like to highlight one thing. Namely, sometimes it might feel like Corona is over, but yeah, of course, it's still among us. We have had on-campus activities from January this year onwards and we also hope to keep uh, on-campus activities for the coming year. However, we never know what's going to happen, so that's why we still have the current guidelines uh, for you. So in case you have any symptoms that correspond to COVID symptoms, do a self-test or get tested in one of the testing facilities here in Nijmegen. You can get free self-tests uh, at the desk, the main desk of the Huygens building. So if you go to the main entrance on your left side, there's the reception where you can request those tests for free. And of course, if you think that you will have a study delay because of illness or because of quarantine period, contact your student advisor and we'll look with you for a personal solution. For more information about Corona, etc., and what it means here on campus, you can always check the Corona news webpage that we have uh, at the Rabat University, you see the links that on the on the slide. And of course, if measures, guidelines change countrywide, we will inform you as the university to, to uh, tell you what that means for you and studying on campus. Yes, thank you very much, Rosa, uh, for your presentation about student support and student advisors. If you, again, if you have any questions about this, please go to thementi.com and uh, in the Mentimeter and put your questions there and we will answer them. And for now, we're going to continue with a video of all the uh, IT and the ICT instructions on uh, the campus. So let's watch this video together. Hello everybody, my name is Ilya Sibin Milutin, I'm a master's student in particle and astrophysics and in this video I want to explain to you which kind of online systems we use at the Radboud University, how you can access them and what they can offer for you during your studies. Firstly, you will have received a login in the form of your student uh, number, which will be something like S123456 uh, with a corresponding passwords. This you can use to log in in all these online systems. And also can, you can use this to log in on the computers at the university. At the Faculty of Science, you will also receive an extra login, namely your science login, which will usually consist of your initials plus your last name and a password. This you can use to log in on the computers here and access some specific programs. Uh, but you cannot use that login to access these online systems. For that, you need your S number. So what kind of online systems do we use? 
Firstly, um, we have the portal, which can be accessed through portal.ru.nl. And from here, you can access all the other systems we have and also find a lot of information. This is the place where all information is gathered. So you can find the contact information of your study advisors, links to uh, useful uh, pages, uh, some news from the university. Um, so everything is gathered here. One other thing we have is the study guide or the course guide or the prospectus, um, which can be accessed through the portal. And here you can find all practical information about your specific study. So here you can find which courses uh, are given, when these are given, which electives you have, which courses are mandatory, um, how to apply for diplomas, how to uh, register your internship. Um, all th that kind of information can be found here. So for example, me as a physics uh, master student, I can find here which specializations we have and for each specialization, which courses are offered. Also, uh, how the master thesis and research internships works, which, uh, how, and also all the information like how to enroll in courses, exams, all kinds of practical information for all kinds of studies can be found here. You can also find here at study facilities more detailed information about the things I'm telling you today. So once you know which courses you are going to follow, you need to register for these courses. This can be done in OSIRIS. OSIRIS can be accessed through the portal or directly through sys.ru.nl. And uh, OSIRIS is, as I said, mainly used to register for courses and exams, also to deregister for them when needed. And here are the grades uh, for your courses officially published. So to register for a course, you can uh, enroll in OSIRIS, you can choose to do it for a specific course and then you can look it up by the name of the course or by the course code which you can find in the study guide or specific test or specific minor or specific specialization. Do note that when you uh, register for a course you will be automatically registered for the first exam of that course but for research uh, you need to uh, register uh, again specifically for that research. It's always good to check one or two weeks before your uh, exam week if you're registered for all your exams. You can also find uh, the, the results from your exams published here. And then you, uh, so here you can check if you have finished the course and if you've passed the course and with what grade. So when you're doing the course, you will be mainly working through Brightspace, which can be accessed through the portal or directly through brightspace.ru.nl. And uh, here, all practical information on your specific courses will be published. This will be some things like lecture notes, exercises, uh, uh, assignments where you need to hand in certain exercises uh, or projects, um, web recordings, uh, announcement for, announcements from your lecturer, all practical information and, uh, about your course can be found here. You can specifically select to pin the courses you, you are currently doing. Always uh, note that it's more important to be registered in OSIRIS when you're, uh, when you're following a course and you should be automatically added to Brightspace once you have res registered in OSIRIS within a few days. Then to know when your courses are being held, you can go to the personal schedule. In this schedule, you can add specific courses or entire tracks to build exactly uh, your schedule on how which courses you are fo following. So, for example, I can add a specific course or entire program. So I will add, add my program physics, particle and astrophysics, add timetable, and then everything is added. This seems like a lot, but that's because all the electives are here. And then you can deselect specific elect electives if you're not following them uh, at the time or at all. And you can also choose to uh, build your schedule from courses and not from the entire program. So you can just add the specific courses you are following at that moment. 
you can find here in the dark blue slots the lectures. You will know who, who is the lecturer, where, where the lecture is being held, and uh, at what time. You can in these li lighter blue slots you can find where your uh, exercise classes have been done, and uh, in the other colors you can find things like computer uh, courses or practicals. Uh, everything will be shown here. So finally, you'll all also receive an email from the university, which you can access through mail.ru.nl or again through the portal. Um, and you can log in here with your S number where you add at root.nl and then your corresponding password. Um, this has been a very quick and brief introduction on the online systems we have. If you have any more, uh, need any more information or have any questions, you can go to this website here and go to these specific tabs. And there you can find more detailed uh, explanations about what these systems do and what you, where you can find what. If you have any specific questions, you can also uh, ask your st study advisor. They can help you uh, find the information you need. I hope this has been uh, instructive and will help you start up uh, at our university and I hope you have a really nice time studying here at the Radboud University. So, as you have watched the video, you've seen most of the platforms that, or maybe all the platforms that we use. It's good to try it yourself if you've not done it yet. And if you face problems, know that you can rewatch this video on YouTube. The link to the video should be in the live stream chat right now. Uh, if not, ask your student advisor. We also have access to the link. And if you still face problems after rewatching and trying to uh, to enter all the platforms, contact your student advisor as well, because there might be something wrong. And then we can fix it at least before the start of the academic year. Next on the agenda is our chair of the 27 board of Olympus, Sander van Akkeren. So I would like to introduce uh, Sander. He will uh, explain more about the different study associ associations that we house here within the faculty. Welcome, Sander. Thank you. Um, as mentioned, I am Sander from Olympus uh, of the 27 board, and I will tell you a bit about study associations here on the uh, Faculty of Science. So, first a bit about us. Um, we are the umbrella association for all the study associations on the Faculty of Science. Uh, what we do is that we uh, maintain the canteens in the Huygens building and we make sure that everyone has amazing social drinks, events, and can just uh, hang out in the, in the canteens. Uh, we also organize activities ourselves that you can uh, join if you want to have fun and we facilitate contacts between the study associations and, um, and the faculty. Uh, first a bit about our associations. As we are the umbrella associations, we have uh, a lot of different associations that um, are relevant for you for different studies. So if you study a master program that is in the biology or medical biology sector, you can go to BV. For molecular sciences, you can go to Sigma. Uh, physics and astronomy, then you can go to Marie Curie. For mathematics, DESDA is your study association. Computing sciences is Estadia. And then there are two more associations. Uh, first, we have the Beta Bedrijvenbeurs. It's a association that organizes a career event every year. And we also, you might also see uh, members of Cognac on the campus, which is for artificial intelligence students. So what are study associations? You might not be familiar with them. Um, Study associations are generally a meeting place for students of your study. So you can uh, go to your study association to meet all kinds of different people with similar interests to you. They organize a lot of informal activities such like pub quizzes, drinks, parties, but also formal activities. Uh, think of um, symposia or uh, like lunch lectures. Um, 
and of course they can also offer you discounts for books if you want to buy books then it's very handy to uh, join one of your the study association so you can get a nice discount you also organize study trips and if you're really dedicated you can also get board experience or committee experience uh, which is nice on your cv for a future career uh, finally we also since this year um, have a new project uh, for trust contact persons uh, the faculty already puts a lot of effort in making people approachable uh, but that is um, not always for you maybe if you feel like you're more comfortable talking to someone of your age from now on we will also have um, a trust contact person that you can um, talk to with your problems uh, about the activities that we organize ourselves uh, we have uh, a lot of different activities that we organize as olympus so we have base phase which is our biggest event it's a big party that's welcome for all faculty students as well as um, other students and we also have the Brakke brunch the day after for if you are really tired and still dizzy from the party from the day before you can have brunch in the uh, canteen another famous uh, activity of us is the film night or movie night where you can have uh, fun watching movies the entire night and uh, another thing is lawn night we also have some smaller activities with, which are beer garden uh, pre base face drinks and pub quizzes are all activities that we organize that you can join uh, you're more than welcome i really like to stress that um, study associations are not only for bachelor students i hear many people in my surroundings that say oh, i'm already a master student i don't want to join anymore because it's a hassle or something it's really not and it's very beneficial for you as well as i mentioned there are career activities there are activities that can get you into contact with alumni um, stuff that help you with your career or also other uh, things that are just very nice to do um, a lot of associations also have special activities for different for, for the master students uh, that really focus on getting you involved as well so uh, feel free to join uh, if you want to know more about us we are also on instagram at olympus uh, underscore nijmegen if you have any questions, you can always email us or come visit us at the boardrooms in Wing 5. That's also where the canteens are located, but you will find out more about that later today. And um, you can always join one of our committees if you're looking for uh, something fun to do and to help out. for your explanation about the student association or study association as I should say here at the faculty um, yeah you will meet those as well at the end of the day after the meeting with your student advisor so you will hopefully get more information about the specific study association that is connected to your program yes and for the last part of this meeting we're gonna have a Q&A session uh, we've already got some questions through the Mentimeter, which is really That's nice. Great. Please ask more if you uh, need anything, if you want to know anything more. So let's already start with a few questions. Um, I think one of the questions that might have been mentioned already, but I think it's just really important, important is, do we have to request appointments to meet with study advisors? That's a very valid question. In principle, not. You are free to book an appointment with one of us, or actually better, of course, to choose an appointment with your uh, appointed student advisor. Uh, we have a booking page where you can make appointments. That booking page should be available in the course guide under points of contact and then student advisor. 
And you can, should also be able to exit it uh, via the portal maybe, student portal. I don't have access to the student portal, so I don't know. <laughs> but I think there is also your student advisor linked and you can click on the booking link there. So no, you don't have to request first. But of course, if you are not able to find your, the booking page of your student advisor, just contact them and ask if you can make an appointment so you get the link. And of course, you will also meet them later today. So great opportunity to ask as well. Yeah, and thank you. Then I have some other questions about people that are enrolling for courses, because apparently not all of the people are enrolled for the courses yet or they don't know Mm -hmm. when to do it or how to do it. Do you, can you give us some more information on that? Well, later today we will have more program specific information indeed about enrollment, etc. Uh, for the coming quarter, it's maybe good to know that the enrollment closes on the 9th of September, so the end of next week. So you will have had some classes already and can decide on the courses that you want to take. Of course, if you are not sure what to choose or it's unclear for you what to choose, uh, contact your student advisor and see or ask them this afternoon for some clarity in that respect. Yeah, thank you. Then, uh, you, because you just mentioned that the, the session that we have this afternoon, is this session in the afternoon also beneficial for people who study uh, science management, innovation, science society or science education? Do they have a program too? Uh, that's a very valid question. I think it can always be uh, useful because uh, science in society and science management and innovation will have a first year of your program content. So you will have to choose also from the electives or mandatory courses within the program you are registered. So those, uh, that, those questions can probably be answered. For the SMI and the CIS specific questions, we have actually different uh, specialization coordinators. So uh, they know more about the program. However, the student advisors also know quite a bit about these programs and how you can schedule it best in your personal situation. So it's always good to go through your own program with the student advisor, especially actually in these uh, specializations. Uh, specifically for science and education, it works slightly different, especially for physics and mathematics. It's more of an integrated program. Uh, maybe, yeah, there's a lot less, there's no information about the education part this afternoon, but of course the, the electives that you have to choose within biology or whatever program you're enrolled in, you will get information about that. And for science and education, it's also important to, need to check with your student advisor what, uh, what you need to do. Yeah. Yes, thanks. Then um, I hope that clears it up for some of you. Then we also have some questions about some of the cultural uh, uh, associations that uh, are mentioned. So one question is, does the uh, Radboud host any musical band competitions? Uh, and the answer is yes, but it's not from the Radboud, it's from uh, the um, culture of the campus. So one of the uh, cultural associations, like the Umbrella Association, is called Culture on the Campus, and they actually host uh, musical band competition so if you have a band or want to join a band you can enter there and thinking about it does Don Roche the music uh, how do you call it uh, like a pop podium pop podium yeah also organize yes these competitions they also have one uh, I know of one it's called Kaf and Kore mm -hmm. and I'm not sure anymore if that's the one from Radboud or from uh, Roche but um, they also do that yeah. yeah and then there was also a question about the cooking association. So I know that there's a, a vegan cooking association and I know that uh, at least pre-COVID pre times uh, in the student church, they also do uh, cooking meetings. You don't have to be religious, uh, you can be. Uh, and they um, host meet and eat uh, meetings with international students, but also for Dutch, Dutch students. Everybody is welcome there. Yeah. So that's uh, somewhere you can uh, go if you like that. Then um, I have another question for you, Rosa. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, because some, some people are a little bit confused about the, the personal schedules and the timetables. Okay. Uh, so one of us can't find the timetable for next year and one of us wants to just know a little bit more on 
information on that. Do they get that today in the afternoon? Or can you give us some information? I think now? most uh, student advisor will touch on these topics in the afternoon. Uh, if you cannot find the schedule for next year, it might be that you are adding courses from last year. So when you go to personalschedule.ru.nl, make sure that when you add the courses, you choose the right year. So you have to choose the year of 2023. Also good to know that the schedule is only published for the first semester in for the second semester, it's only published on around 15th of December. So that makes sense that you don't see that schedule yet. That is what I might think is the problem. However, if that's not a problem, indeed, go to your student advisor and figure out uh, how to, to fix it for you. The other question that you had about the schedule, what was that again? Um, that was just somebody that didn't really understand how the schedule works in general. Okay. Uh, but I think some... Yeah, well, you can add courses manually, as I just described, by going to personalschedule.ru.nl and add the courses. You can also, as soon as you enroll for courses in OSIRIS and wait about 10 minutes for everything to synchronize, find your personal schedule with uh, the courses you are enrolled for. And in, then they should, there should be some kind of a block system where you see the courses two hours each per the, for the whole week. Um, yeah, so yeah. it's I difficult think, to yeah. answer this question without maybe a context. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if, you've, if you still have problems, please ask your peers or otherwise your student advisor to help you out. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good solution. And if you manage to uh, work with personal schedule, then in this personal schedule, there will also be the locations of your classes. Um, because someone asked if, if how they know in which building they mm -hmm. have classes. So that's on the schedule. And the buildings are always shortened. So for example, HG is for Huygens building. And if, it, if you have uh, classes in any other locations, then the letters will indicate the building. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, another question maybe is, what is the public transit towards the campus like during rush hour? The tr public transport, yeah. Line 10? Line 10, yeah. Can be pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, so uh, for those of you, if you don't live in Nijmegen and you have to arrive by train, you will probably take bus 10 to university. It goes from the central station to past the Huygens building and further up to the Erasmus building. Yeah. Yeah, it can be quite busy, but actually, um, they because we also have other schools here, the uh, University of Applied Sciences and uh, the MBO, and uh, they all s uh, adjusted their schedules slightly so that the they don't start at the same times, so that helped. Yeah. yeah, and I can tell Line 10 is the busiest line for the more the public transport. If there are of course no strikes or anything else that is not working well, so everyone has to take public transport, it should be pretty okay. To use the public transport, though, you need to have a so-called OV card that our Vice Dean Nicola de Groot also mentioned. Uh, it's a card where you can upload money to use for the public transport. So you have to check in and check out with that card. S I think buses still accept some cash or at least they do pay by card. They don't like it, but they, they do. Don't, they, they don't like <laughs> it. That's another thing. But they still accept it. So it's, it's easiest to just get a card, OV card, as yeah, soon as you can. Yeah. And maybe another option. Not OV. Is the bike? Is the bike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we also in Nijmegen we actually we have a bike rush hour. This is true uh, because a lot of people uh, use bikes here, which uh, I would strongly recommend. Actually, the bike rush hour is way better than the public transport rush hour, and it saves money over time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you happen to live in Nijmegen, uh, then do purchase a bike and use it here. Yeah, there are several second-hand shops around the city center, in the city center, and I think also one here on the campus where you can uh, search for second-hand bikes. Uh, they are about, yeah, last time I looked, uh, between 70 and 120 euros, more or less. I don't know what the prices are doing these days. Yeah. And of course, you can also see within the program itself if there is a soon going to be graduated student uh, who is going to sell his or her bike and if you can buy it from them. Yeah. 
Then I also have some questions about lectures and recordings of lectures. Mm -hmm. So first the question is, do lectures get recorded and where can you view them? That's a very valid question. Yeah. Maybe you as a student yeah. uh, can explain your experiences. Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so not all the lectures are recorded. So usually um, half of, about half of the lectures get recorded. And if lectures are recorded, then you can find them on back on Brightspace. That's where all your course information is too. But not all lectures get recorded because, yeah, it's just if lectures are really small and there has to be a person recording it, it just doesn't work for every lecture. But I know that if you really can't make a lecture, for example, because you have another lecture at the same time, or maybe you can't be on the campus for specific reasons, they will always be able to work it out. So you can always ask the teacher, hey, I cannot be here, could you please record it? I have done this myself before, and they are really happy to uh, help you with mm. that. Um, so that maybe also solves a question from someone else, because someone else said, uh, some of my courses are being recorded, but they overlap with other courses. So how will, be, how will it be possible? So I think that's another question here. Um, if the lectures are recorded from at least one of those that overlap, you can watch it back and it yeah. shouldn't be a problem. You can see it in your schedule with, there's a green play button when the courses are recorded. So it will, will be very obvious. Yes, yeah. that is true. Yeah. And um, maybe another question, a quick question here. Should we bring a laptop to the sessions this afternoon? Oh, good question. For me personally, no. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I, I can't tell what my colleagues are doing, but I can imagine that it's more talking about what you can expect for the next weeks and also what you need to have set up before you can start. Of course, yeah, may maybe it's, it's nice to have it on your lap to check things out. If they talk about Osiris, okay, can I log in uh, if to, to look, uh, yeah, look along with, with the student advisor. Uh, so I can, I can imagine it can be useful, but I don't think it's a necessity. No, no I also know when I did the Master's Welcome Day, I didn't uh, bring one and I didn't need one. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to, you can always do that. Um, another question about the Master's Welcome Day or the, the session later is, is it advice for pre-master students to come in this afternoon? Okay, that uh, is a very valid question. Well, pre-masters will most likely do bachelor's courses to uh, cover the gap that there is, the bridge gap between their bachelor's and the master's. So there will be no news about your pre-master at least. If you want to know more about the program of the master's, well, no one is going to check who is coming in. So if you're interested in knowing more about the master's program, sure. I think, uh, yeah, for pre-masters, if you di weren't able to join, there was some introduction yesterday for some pre-masters, not all, but if you were not able to join, and then also see with your student advisor of the pre-master if there's an alternative, maybe a presentation that they have from yesterday, uh, they can send to you. Um, so yeah, there's no information about pre-masters, at least this afternoon. Yeah. No. yeah. Um, and I just want to follow back on what I said about the recording of lectures. Someone said that on another faculty, they don't record any lectures at all this year. Um, and he, they ask if that's different than for us too. Uh, I, I have not heard about no lectures being recorded for any reason. Yeah, I, I know that because of Corona, students are less likely to go back to campus. So some faculties may have decided to say like, okay, we don't record anything. So students have to come back and we get back in the rhythm of, of working together, studying together. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice environment to study in. The, how, well, the Faculty of Science has recorded many lectures for many years. So it was there already before we start the, the Corona pandemic started. So I think that's why we still keep it there because uh, we use it with a different mindset. Yeah, yeah. we've always used We've it. always yeah. done it. Yeah. yeah. So you can rewatch the lecture, for example, or yeah. watch it in your own time if you can't make it to the, yeah. to the lecture itself. Yes. There's uh, another question uh, about study delay. 
So mm -hmm. they ask if it's possible to have study delay when you're taking courses that are unrelated to your core program. And I think actually this question is can be answered in twofold because mm -hmm. first of all, study delay is always possible. It's always like some people will always have study or could have study delay for various reasons. Um, and that is, in it's not really a problem if you have study delay. Um, although I would advise um, speaking with your student advisors about that. But it doesn't necessarily have to be because you're taking courses that are unrelated to your core program, because in our program we actually have a lot of space for you to do courses that are unrelated to your core program. Yeah, there's always a, a part of free electives. Every program has different amount of credits attached to the free electives, but there should always be one part of free electives where you can actually do a course completely unrelated to your program. Yeah. 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 So for example, if I study physics and astronomy and I want to do a course on art history, then that's totally possible to do. And I can even put it in my corp or in my program, get the credits for it. Um, although then maybe the, the schedules could overlap because that's true. They will not account for you also doing another course. Uh, but again, something is always possible when you yeah. just email the lectures. Exactly. And maybe also to touch on this topic a little bit more, if you have study delay because you want to learn more, of course that is possible. Uh, but we don't really see that as a study delay. You just decide yourself to study for longer and learn more during your master's. So there are students who obtain more than 120 credits that are necessary for the master's because they want to do those extra courses. Uh, study delay because of illness or personal circumstances, that is of course a totally different thing because that means often that you don't have uh, the full time to, to, to put in your studies and therefore you don't obtain the 60 credits that uh, are the standard somewhat for a, a full year. So that's a different thing and in that case I would really go to the student advice and see what does that mean for me and my personal schedule for the next two years. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, another question is can you take notes on iPad or is paper and pen required? I think this is about when you're in lectures mm -hmm. um, and I can answer this uh, from my own experience um, and that is that most people use pen and paper but you can definitely use laptops and I see people using laptops too. It's just that sometimes or at least some of the uh, programs have a lot of lectures where the teachers are writing on a, a whiteboard, chalkboard. Chalkboard, we still have chalkboards. Yeah, we have chalkboards. Uh, and they, they use a lot of formulas and equations. And for me, it's always better to just write it on paper because I can really work with formulas in Word that well. But if you feel like you can do all of that on uh, your laptop. Yeah, piece, or an iPad with a pen iPad, these yeah. days. It's uh, yeah. very but handy, actually. Yeah, so in lectures, I would always use pen and paper, but you can use laptops, definitely iPads. Uh, there's also a part where you, uh, we call them vercolations, the uh, tutorials. tutorials. And that's where you make exercises or assignments. And that it was a part where I did always bring a laptop because then it's just nice to have it in front of you. Yeah. But if you don't want to bring your laptop or you don't own a laptop, you can borrow laptops from a university library. There's, you can just get one in the morning, give it back in the evening. You can do this every day, it's free. Uh, and I use that a lot too. So Very that's a good option as well. Yeah. yeah. Then another question is, are there lockers in the Huygens building? Yes, there are. They are, yeah. There is this, the white lockers on the entrance of wing three, if I'm correct, wing mm -hmm. three, where there we have the, uh, the, uh, the bigger holes, the lecture holes. And those you can use a coin of one euro or 50 cent, I can't remember, to use the locker for the day. But we also have bigger lockers that you can actually rent for longer term. Yeah. I think you have to go to the reception. Do you know about it? Where you need to go f if you want a locker for more permanent? I don't know about that. I just know that there's a lot of lockers that you can have up to a week. Okay. Um, and there you don't have to do anything. It's just that some, 
they have two types of lockers. One is emptied on Wednesdays, the other on Thursdays. So you can choose which one you can uh, put your stuff in. Um, so that is a possibility, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the lockers I mean are at the side of the library, uh, green lockers mm. inside the wings. And from what I remember, you can actually rent those for half a year or a year. Okay. Uh, but you have to pay for it and you don't get the money back. Okay. Yeah. So that's different. Yeah, yeah. But probably uh, you could ask the, the people at the reception. I think you have to go to the reception desk. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some questions about um, dropping courses and doing or enrolling for a lot of courses and then choosing which ones to drop. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question is, are there any academic consequences when you drop courses? As long as you deregister for the exam opportunity, it should not have any consequences. That's the main important thing. Deregister for the exam, otherwise you have used an opportunity if you don't show up. And that can be, yeah, that can have consequences in the future, unless you decide not to continue with the course in the future. Yeah. Then it has no consequences. Exactly. But it's nice also for the lecturer to know who is coming and who is not coming. Yeah, of course. yeah. But it is, uh, uh, as someone asked, it is possible to enroll for multiple courses and then try it out for a try week. Try it out and then de-enroll. Yeah. Or de-register. De yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's possible, yeah. Um, someone asks uh, that, or notes, that mail.ru.nl is not available anymore and that we now use I Outlook and ask if this True. is correct. I noticed that in the IT video, I was like, oh, that's the wrong email address. Uh, the video is from two years ago, if I remember correctly. And we recently migrated to Microsoft 365, which also means that you have access with your Radboud email address to the platform of Microsoft 365. Very useful. Uh, however, the mail address is indeed different. We work now with Outlook. I'm not 100% sure what the email address is on top of my head, but in principle, if you go to the portal, your student portal, and then click on the mail, then you should be redirected to your email address. Exactly. That's also why I didn't really know the answer to either about what the specific email is, because I never open it in Outlook or exactly. in the app. I always go to the student portal and click on the email button there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And if that doesn't work, try uh, later this afternoon if you see the student advisor ask there and then they can show you on the big screen as well. Yeah, how it exactly. Works. Yeah. And um, there's another question is, how can we connect to university Wi-Fi? And that's a good question. It's um, EduRoam on our university. So maybe some of you already have other EduRoam uh, accounts. It's worldwide. Yeah, but yeah. here on the university, um, it usually works with your student number. So the S and then your student number and then at uh, ru.nl. Yeah, so you have to add the domain, making sure that they know you are from the Radboud University. Exactly. Uh, and if that doesn't work, just ask around uh, to your the peers around you or the people you see w walking uh, or even your student advisors. But I think you will manage before you get to your student advisors with other people around you. Um, because we do have free Wi-Fi everywhere. Then I... Someone said, how do we decode the building abbreviation for different building locations? I think that's a great question because it's Definitely. not always obvious. Um, yeah, I can give you some, but is there somewhere a list? I'm not sure if the abbreviations are on there, but it's pretty obvious. Uh, we have, a, for example, a map. I will at least show it later today in my session with a student advisor uh, where you can download the map of the campus or if you just Google on campus map, Radboud University, you will most likely also f easily find it. And on there you will see all the names of the buildings and you can hopefully easily figure out which is <laughs> what building. I'm not sure if the abbreviations are on there as well. Yeah. But if you're not sure, just ask around because there are plenty of students here that have been here for longer and they know exactly where you have to go. And um, yeah, examples. I can give you some, the most important examples exactly. are HD for Huygens, 
Lin, that's the Linnaeus building. It's the gray building next to the Huygens building, which has a lot of lecture halls. So that's where some of the lectures are that have like really big groups. Then the um, Erasmus building is quite an important one there where some people have lectures. So letter E, yeah. just one E. Yeah. Then we also have College Zale complex, which is like lecture room complex. Um, it's CC. CC, that's correct. Yeah. And that's uh, Erasmus and CC are a bit further on the campus, but you, you will find it on the maps. Um, and I think that's actually where most of you will have classes. Yeah, sometimes you have uh, classes in the transitorium, which is the building behind the Huygens. So if you mm. exit the Huygens building by the backside where the canteen is, then you will bump into H HFML as well as uh, the transitorium. So if you have HFML, it's that's the abbreviation of it, or the full name, transitorium, then you know it's uh, in that direction. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I think those are the most important ones. The last one I know about is EOS, and that's uh, the management faculty at the sports, at the state who shares yeah. an entrance with the sports center. Eleonore Ostrom building. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, so I hope that solves it as well. Um, then, and I, we already talked about the possibility of people joining this afternoon about with who do CIS or SME mm -hmm. for education. Um, and I just want to add that there's someone that's uh, in already in their second year of medical biology and they ask if they, it's still uh, important to go if they switch to SME. And I think that I could answer this is that it's always nice to go because you just meet people from your year because now you're switching. So there's new people. Uh, but if you already know everything about the medical biology study because you already have studied it for some years, uh, then maybe not everything that will be said will be uh, useful for you. But yeah, you can always just go there. You're welcome uh, to come along. Mm. And I have a couple more questions. And that's, um, oh, I already see, actually these questions we've already had. So I think uh, we're finished now. Uh, well, yeah, well, well, it was a nice amount of questions, I would say, perfectly on time. Uh, well, if you have more questions, of course, you can ask them later today to, uh, to your student advisor or on any other day, contact your student advisor via email or make an appointment with them. For now, now I would like to thank you for watching, of course, and have an enjoyable rest of the day. Don't forget to join the Radboud International Workshop at 11. You can enter the Zoom by the Zoom link that was sent in the email invitation. And of course, we're looking forward to meet you later today on campus. Until then, uh, thank you and goodbye.